So, a few hours. <laughs> a few hours. You know, as when um, Reverend Connie mentioned about maintenance and spa day, you know, as some of you know, um, my wife has a hair salon. So every day's quote unquote a spa day in my house because you know this, the the salon is under underneath and you know we we live above and here was here was the amazing thing you know when she when she said that <clears throat> you know I hate spas I hate massages I I don't like I just that that's just not me but you know the 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 unique thing when people come to the salon and this ties into my message that's their spa time that's their time to get pampered by my, my wife and the employees. It's their time to get their eyelashes done, their hair did, you know, a makeover. And I walk in, you know, I'm already beat because I've poured out at church for, you know, 10 hours a day. And um, I just want to go upstairs. But nothing recharges me more when God wants to move onto somebody's life who's getting a makeover. I could be tired as a dog, frustrated at people, frustrated at people because, you know, people are crazy. But when it's all said and done, and I go upstairs and I don't eat dinner until 10, 1030 at night, I am recharged. My maintenance time isn't receiving. My maintenance time is giving. Because that's what recharges me. That's what lubes me up. Why? Because I have to go to the throne room. Because I can't maintenance them without going to him. I can't, a mechanic can't maintenance a vehicle without reading the manual of how that vehicle operates. It's what they go to mechanic school for. So the title of my message is this. Are you going to stay and go? Sounds like an oxymoron. But the question God wants to ask you today is, are you going to stay and go? We're talking about Pentecost. To receive what? Power. Power. So my focus today is this, evangelism. I know you all are going to love me after this. Fruit that you have received the power. Because if if, if we have not truly walked in and, and spent the past 10 days in the upper room, I'm here to say, what you do after today will be evidence if you receive the, the, the power or not. Okay. You know, God can come down and move and, and demonstrate the gift of the Spirit at any moment. And he already has. But evangelism is different because it's a heart matter. So I'm here to say God wants to deposit in you his power to evangelize. Deacon, Deacon Heath just talked about uh, looking at your harvest of souls. I've had two this year. And I'm, look, and I'm looking at it as that's not good enough. Because I want more. I mean, I don't want to stand before God and say, I've only got two this year. He did say go into all the world and preach the gospel when I mean, we've gone through since the beginning of the year mark 16 15 so it's time to evangelize amen yeah. so we're, we're going to do pentecostal chaviot scriptures turn with me to acts chapter 1 1 through 8 and while you're there i'll just start to i'll just start to read the former treatise i have made o theophilus of all that jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the holy ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion by infallible proofs being seen of them okay i'm just a reminder for 40 days so these past 40 days you know the 
as we were counting the Omer, those 40 days, we should have been having an encounter through the stops of God demonstrating who he is to us, dealing with us. Then the next 10 days, we should have shut ourselves into the upper room with one accord, which I'll get to in one second, seeking the promise not to change us in a say, well, yeah, to change us, but more so to change us to go there. So are you going to stay and go? Well, where do we have to stay? In the throne room. Because we are not going to have the power unless we've been there. Don't. That's why I don't like massages. Don't touch me. Well, why not? Because I don't like you touching me. That's why. Not because I have an ascended. Just don't touch me. But we have to get to this place in this upper room and being assembled with them. Who's the them? Those who want the promise to evangelize. That's what they were after. They were after a power to change them. Because remember, they were afraid to say that they were a Christian, that they were a follower of Christ. They were afraid, but yet they're, they're struggling between this, this conversation that Jesus had with them, go into all the world, but yet I'm afraid because out there I could be killed. I could be persecuted. I could go to jail. I could lose my place out there. But God is saying, if you come up here, I can send you out there. But if you try to go out there and not spend time with me, your, 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 your fears could happen. Are you follow what I'm saying? This is a good message. I'm just, laying some, I'm just laying some groundwork. For John, excuse me, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Well, guess what? This scripture is fulfilled today. God doesn't cancel his appointments. We're the one who cancels them and reschedules. And, and he does, and it, there is a surcharge on canceling God appointment. Trust me, I know. Just saying. I've reaped the, the unnecessary benefits of canceling an appointment with God. Phone calls, emails, <laughs> silence on the other end. I know a thing about correction because I've seen correction a time or two. But you know what? I'm thankful for it. Because it's put me in a position to go to the upper room and stay. It forced me to go into the upper room. Because now I got to deal with my mind, will, and emotions of my choices. And it's humbling. You know, in the, in the, in the natural, God, God has put me in a nice place, a nice place of work. He's treated me well. But you know what? It doesn't matter because the only reason I got there is not because of anything I've done. It's because I've gone back to him and looked at everybody at my work and said, God, they need somebody. They need somebody. A shepherd an intercessor, a mediator, something that's going to take them from where they're at in this religious mountain to get them out, to get them up there. Because I've wanted to leave my place of employment so many times. But God has always said, no. You're not there for you. You're there for them. Oh boy. 
Joy, joy. But, but through, <laughs> exactly, but through that, my relationship with God the Father has increased tremendously. Because now, because I, he's put me there, uh-oh, uh, I need his spirit. Because, if I, because, again, if I begin to witness to them in my, in my natural, in my frustrations, oh, that's a bigger witness. Well, what does God do for a minister? He's frustrated. He's ticked. He walks around. Don't talk to me. Don't touch me. I put a sign up. Sorry. I, 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 you sure? Okay. Awesome. Praise God. And we didn't talk about our, you know, um, so that's what is amazing about being in one accord. I put a sign up on the back of my chair sharing this with Reverend Connie and Bishop. I think it was on, it was on Thursday. I get into my office. It's, you know, a little bit before, a little bit before seven and, uh, our phones go live at 7 a.m. <clears throat> well, uh, by 6.58, people were already in my office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at 7 o'clock when customers are calling in because they need maintenance on their house because something is broken down. <clears throat> so now I got customers, I got employees, I got other managers all in, all in my office. And... and there's there's dumb questions that come forward. Deacon Heath, you, you know what I'm about to say. I won't say it publicly. So finally, I, I was frustrated. And, and so I got my red marker out, you know, because I was a former teacher and red, you know, brings out attention. Um, I drew an angry face, you know, a little nose, little squiggly face. And I wrote on the bottom, no, mo, M-O. Dumb, yeah. No mo. I used to teach. I used to teach in inner city Harrisburg, you know. So, you know, I still have the. I can. I can speak that language to that people group. Amen. <laughs> so I put no mo dumb question marks, and I taped it to the back of my office chair. And when you walk into my office, you don't see my face. You see my hindsight, kind of like Moses did with God. You see my backside. So I taped it on the back of the chair. <laughs> right. <laughs> For shame. <laughs> so they kind of, they walked. I, I could hear their footsteps. And then he just stopped. And then he would turn around and walk out. I'm like, well, I don't know if this is a good thing because somebody needs an answer to a question. Either they, A, they figured it out themselves because they realized it was a dumb question and all they had to do was rub their two brain cells together. I love you all at work for those of you that are online. If you are, you know, watching this later, they, they know me very, they know me very well. So then I kind of felt bad. Um, in a little while, I felt bad. Um, then, then, then I got out my red marker and I drew a happy face with a big nose, you know, big smiley face. And then I put, I'm not Google. And then taped it underneath that question or underneath that paper. <laughs> that, yeah, because like, why are you bringing me stuff? Like you should already know the answers to. That's not what we need the power for. Right, right, right. We, 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 need, we need the power. We need the power of God, the spirit of God to deal with the real heart issues of mankind. People have heard about salvation. They've heard about Jesus from so many people. What they haven't seen is somebody who's going to witness to them with the power. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. What they out there need is somebody named you to go to the throne room and answer their hard questions, to fix their engine, to fix their heart. Well, I thought that's God's job. Yeah, through you. 
If I tried to fix my vehicle, it would be a disaster. I mean, I need a step stool just to wash my, my hood. You know, when people drive by my yard and they see me washing my tank um, and they see a step stool, they kind of just chuckle. Because it is funny, a five foot seven buck fifty guy trying to, you know, just saying. But, but, but that's, how, that's how witnessing looks to somebody when we're trying to witness to them without the power. It looks silly. That was not in my notes. But praise God for him. So, uh, okay, help me. Uh, so I want, today is a day to stop being silly, evangelize them. You know, when people go to the spa, this is the amazing thing. You know, I, I see, I see, uh, I joke with them, with the women who sit in, in, you know, in my wife's chair and the other employee's chair. I always see them at their, their best. You know, they got foils in their hair. They got caps, mascaras running down because they just got microabrasial, facial, whatever that thing is where they suck the stuff. Yeah, they suck stuff out of your face. It's like, you know, their face is all puffy and, oh, it's, it's, it ain't, sorry, ladies. It ain't pretty. So I always walk over to them with my, with my camera and say, hey, can I put this on our, on our Facebook page? Trust me, I'll do, a, I'll, I'll do an after. <laughs> this is the before and after. And they look at me with fire coming out of their eyes. <laughs> but they know I'm joking, but guess what? Then I ask them, how, how, how you doing? Uh-oh. Now they know I'm about something else. Because I know something is up. Why? Because God just sent me down from upstairs in my upper room, in my office, to go back downstairs. Because I generally don't want to talk to people after work. So now, and my wife knows, if, if, if I'm down there for a prolonged period of time, God's going to move on somebody. And then she lets me go. She, well, let me say this. She lets God go. And then people walk out of there not only changed in the natural, but they're a lot lighter than, than when they came in. Guess what? It's just like church. That's how evangelism should be when we interact with somebody out there. But I encourage you, don't go out there unless you spend time with the Father. You will look silly with your stool. Maybe it's those Daisy Dukes too that I'm wearing. Just kidding. When therefore they were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will, will, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again to the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. And this stood out to me for the very first time. And he had me write, God had me write this statement down. Evangelism happens when you stop looking towards changing your state and start looking to change somebody else's state. When you move past changing your state of mind, your circumstances, not that I'm saying don't pray for yourself, that'd be stupid for me not to say that. But there are times when you need to, need to have a desire to walk out of your house, get into your car, when you go to work or the grocery store or wherever and begin looking to change somebody else's state. If you can't do that, you have not, from this day, from this day, you have not received the power. Because Pentecost comes. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay we know verse 8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is upon you and you shall be what? Unto me, both in Jerusalem. Well, where are they at? Where? In Jerusalem. Well, where's Jerusalem? Sandusky, Michigan. Where do you have to start? Not to the person to the right of you or to the left of you in this service. 
It's somebody else out there. They didn't begin witnessing to themselves. They didn't begin witnessing to the 120. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There was another group. There was another, there was another city that they had to reach. Then after that, then you go to Judea and Samaria and to the other most part of the earth, known as Middletown, Pennsylvania. The miracles of Pentecost. Can I keep, Bishop, keep going? Stop? Okay. I just want to be obedient. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with what? I want to, I, I, this has probably been said, but this is again, the Lord pointed this out to me. The fact that a hundred people were in one accord is a miracle unto itself. I'm going to step on some toes, but I'm doing this for a purpose. Well, God's doing this for a purpose. One accord, what does it look like? Okay. It's not just showing up on Sundays to do your duties or on Wednesdays or on Friday nights. Bishop is probably going to look at me when I say this. Uh, well, how many people have posted on the blog? <clears throat> okay, I, I, knew, I knew I wasn't going to get a response. Well, you know, I, I, I knew the look response I was going to get. One accord. A, being in accord doesn't mean just showing up and raising our hands and doing everything on a, on a Sunday and Wednesday and a Friday night. That's public. That's expected of us on a, on, a, on a service to service basis. I mean, the blog is, is an opportunity for people to see are they really united? Maybe, I, maybe I'm going to walk home. <laughs> or walk back. Walk. Hold on. <laughs> And listen, it, it is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to demonstrate that your heart is in one accord with the heartbeat of the ministry. Okay. It's a demonstration to, to, to people that are out there that are coming to investigate this place. So we have, I don't know how many people we have in here today. I'm just saying, listen, I'm 600 miles away and you're thinking, okay, uh, how are you in one accord? Well, I've spent, time with the, I've spent time with the Father, the Heavenly Father and the Father. What's the heartbeat, God? Because if we truly are going to reach this city as a ministry, one accord has to take place. The internet church has to see all of us in one accord. The people that I'm ministering to at work that I say go to the website. Here's what they ask me. And I'm not, and I'm not saying this for any other reason. They ask me, well, we don't see you a lot. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. I'm not, you, you hear what I'm saying? Just, because what they have to say is just as important what I'm saying to you. It's actually more important because God put them on a the schedule. One accord. It doesn't matter if, if my name's on the website. What matters is that they see the unification. Well, who am I witnessing? God, or who am I demonstrating? Where's Liam? He must be. In, what am I demonstrating? God and being in one accord with the ministry. Because if I'm out of unity, God can't bless that. I mean, we were talking, Bishop and I were talking, and I'm sorry I'm preaching. Bishop and I were talking about the born again men out in Pennsylvania because I deal with. 20 guys at work. 6 a.m. When, when, when we're screaming busy for them to get up, 
you know, five o'clock to drive to go get breakfast. I'm like, okay, well, um, you know, Lord, how's this going to work? Because, you know, our, our attendance has decreased and it's not because they didn't want to go. It's because, you know, they have work to go to at seven o'clock in the morning in 140 degree attics. So, you know, they're, they're, they're weighing cost. So, I, you know, so I called him and I said, you know, hey, I want to bounce this off you. Why? Because I want to be in one accord. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing something from the Father about born-again men. It's not crystal clear. So I go to my Father. We need to get born-again men in one accord. So guess what? We're shifting born-again men to Saturday. Why? Again, to get into one accord. Unity of a fellowship to demonstrate God. Are you following what I'm saying? Because it's really still all about evangelism. It's still really all about reaching somebody else. Moving right along. Here was a, the, the other amazing part about Pentecost. Did God do what he said he was going to do? Did the promise come? Yes. To who? The ones in the, the ones who were in one accord. The ones who were in one accord. 120 people seeking God's face to change them so they could change somebody else. So I'm not going to keep her now. I just want to point out some things. You know, because you all can read, you know, I, I'm going to point out something in, in verse 11. And here's what God said to me the other night. He says, when you, when you witness with the power of the Spirit, you know, they're talking to the different language. The power of God comes like a rushing mighty wind. And it changed them. And they left the upper room. And went out and in, went out into the city. When you witness with this power of the Spirit, you should never desire again to witness without the Spirit. Should I say that one more time? When you witness with the power of the Spirit, you should never desire again to witness without the Spirit. Well, here's the flip side of the coin. If you've never witnessed with the power of the Spirit, you will never know you are not witnessing without the power of the Spirit. My God. How many times have we, have we put on our fake eyelashes, our fake face, our fake heart, our fake nails, our fake shoes, our fake Christian attire? and attempted to witness somebody. And you walking away going, well, they didn't receive it. You know what? Thank God that they didn't. Yeah. Don't shout me down. Thank God they didn't. <laughs> because it wasn't real. It, it, it makes it harder than when they experience the real. So why not just witness with the power of the Spirit? Because now that I've, I, I've touched and tasted it and seen it's good, that's what I want to do. So when I go to work, my prayer is, God, I, I, I need your Spirit to talk to these people. Because again, if I, if, if I sit in my chair people coming in and out of my office, people on the phone wanting to talk to me. If I stay in the flesh, all they're going to get is flesh. But if I stay and my phone rings or my door opens, <laughs> now power comes. Now his spirit shows up. Why? Because I've already prepared a place for him to be at. Now I just shut my eyes or look at them and, and they, they begin vomiting all their problems. I'm like, God, what do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do? 
does that mean you, you speak in tongues and prophesy over them? No. I may ask them a simple parable question. And then their eyes go, oh. 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 I said to one lady, I said, do you have a, do you have a belly button? Maybe I'll share this story. And she just looked at me because she was just ranting about her kid. She's like, yeah, I have a belly button. I said, well, what's attached to it besides lint? And she's like, well, nothing. I'm like, well, keep it that way. The umbilical cord got cut. And this was her face. And she looked at me and she goes, I just had church today. Yeah. yeah. Can you get out of my office, please? I have work to do. <laughs> but it's simple. It's simple. It was a simple little statement. I didn't come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was a good thing I didn't because I, I just wanted to say I, in my flesh I'm like I really don't care <laughs> but yet how are we going to treat people that we don't know I mean and I love this and I, and I love this employee but how are we going to treat people who are out there that we don't know I mean do we do we have enough compassion do we have enough love for them to give them what they need and not what they want they need the power of God. Yeah. We need the power of God. I promise I'm done. So after Pentecost happens, did you know Peter's first sermon was nothing to do about a gift of the Spirit? You know what his first sermon was about? The Torah. He began to explain from the word of God what this demonstration was. His first sermon was Joel. Well, this is just God pouring out his spirit. It was already written about. It was already written. I'm going to say this one more time. It was already written. Which means what? If you say, I don't know, I, I expected that. It means God wants to do the same thing today as he did 2020 years ago, 19 years ago. I want an apostle to say to the city at the next pastor's meeting, wow, man, your ministry changed. Your people are evangelizing. Your people are going out of the highways speaking the wonderful works of God. He can say to them, well, it was written. Amen. Did you know at that moment in time, evangelism from the church changed forever? That's true. Evangelism changed forever. Why? Because they received the power of the Spirit to go be a witness. Evangelism changed. It changed the course of history. Can we change the course of history in Sandusky, Michigan, Middletown, Pennsylvania, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, to the other most parts of the earth? Can we do it? It is readily and available today because it already has been written. Two more minutes? <laughs> Hebrews 4.16. Many of you know this verse. Hebrews 4.16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne room of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Sure, I get it's for us, but we should be applying that for somebody else. Come boldly into the throne room of grace. Receive this power so we can go help someone in their time of 
need. Well, when's their time of need? Now. Well, they don't have major things going on in their life. Well, do some maintenance. You still need the power to do maintenances. This has been a prayer of mine that has is, that is helped me stay in the throne room. You ready? In the scripture, it's Psalm 27, verse 4. Should we stay and go? This helped me. It says, one thing I have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He's not talking about the sweet by and by. Why do we need to stay in the house of the Lord? Because we need the power to go. Once we still we receive the power of the Holy Spirit to go evangelize, doesn't mean we leave and ignore him. Say, hey, I got touched by God. I shimmied and shake today. My God, it, this day is going to be over. Tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow's going to present a new people who are going to be in a time of need. Every person has been uniquely created by God. We all don't look alike. Praise God. It would be scary because then Minister Riley and I would really look like twins. And nobody could tell us apart. They still can't. So we still need to get back into and stay in the throne room of God. In the house of the Lord, all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to behold the beauty of the Lord, watch this, and to inquire in his temple. Well, what are we inquiring about? What's on your agenda today, God? What's on your agenda today? What do you want me to do today at work? I need your, I need your spirit. People at work, people in the salon, my wife, they don't need to see me. They need to see the Father. And the people out there, they need to see the Father in you. So who's ready to receive? Who's been preparing themselves to receive this power? So, Father, I thank you for all of those who have spent time in the upper room. It is written, Father, <laughs> it is written that a group of people who have spent time with you seeking the promise that you would pour out, that they would receive and, and go and speak the oracles of God and to be a demonstration of who you are. Baptize your people today. In the name of Jesus, amen.